To all participants of the Future China Global Forum, a very good afternoon. The global economy is going through its worst recession in a century. COVID-19 has inflicted a severe supply and demand shocks to our economies. Businesses and workers are facing a challenging time. At the same time, our global order is coming under strain. Globalization is on the retreat as some advanced economies are now feeling domestic pressure to turn inwards. Geostrategic competition between China and the US is intensifying. This will likely persist in some form, regardless of who assumes the US presidency. But it will have serious ramifications for all of us in the region. We also do not know what a post-COVID world will look like, but we know that it will be very different. We are likely to see a bigger premium on resilience in supply chains, greater emphasis on digitalization and innovation, and new areas of growth emerging. All countries and businesses, big and small, will have to make adjustments. This is why the theme of today's forum is so relevant. In today's landscape, how can Singapore contribute to China's and Southeast Asia's growth and build a more resilient future? This is crucial because Asia is well positioned to contribute to global economic growth. Asia's weight in the global economy was already growing before the pandemic. China is now the second largest economy in the world. Japan pulled itself out of its lost decade thanks to Abenomics. India, with a large and youthful population, grew at almost 5% last year and can reap a significant demographic dividend. The 10 economies of ASEAN also grew at around 5% last year. All have benefited from investments from one another and from major partners. The outlook for Asia remains bright. Our economic fundamentals are strong as we have undertaken the necessary reforms after the Asian financial crisis and global financial crisis. Several Asian countries have managed to contain the spread of COVID-19 and get the economies back on track. Many Asian economies have large and growing middle class, providing a strong base for production and consumption. Asia is home to a vibrant startup ecosystem and to many innovative companies. In the case of China, localized outbreaks have been swiftly dealt with, the economy resumed growth last quarter, and China is the only major economy that is expected to grow this year. But like everyone else, China continues to face risk and uncertainties. China is finding new ways to evolve its economic model and continue its reforms after four decades of reform and opening up. This is not straightforward given the size and complexity of China's economy and its aging population. But it is clear that China is determined to overcome these challenges as it did with the adoption of market-oriented reforms from 1978. So how can we work together to make Asia a vibrant region that supports thriving businesses, creates better jobs, and delivers a better standard of living for our people. Let me offer three suggestions. First, countries must remain open and connected to the world and make adjustments so that globalization works for all. Second, for Singapore, we must strengthen connectivity with the region. Third, for our businesses, in an era of tremendous change, we must foster partnerships to emerge stronger from this crisis. Let me elaborate. Despite the current retreat from globalization, a basic principle remains unchanged. An open and connected global economy allows all countries to develop and prosper. Since global trading rules were established after the Second World War, world exports 
increased by more than 300 times prior to COVID-19. Countries in our region are benefiting immensely. But in an uncertain economic environment, many workers are anxious about their jobs and the benefits of economic openness. To ensure that the benefits of globalization remains beneficial to all countries, we'll have to all restructure our economies and upskill our workers. In Singapore, we're adjusting our policies to ensure that they continue to serve the interests of our people. We're reviewing our work pass policies, strengthening fair consideration, enhancing efforts to upskill our workers, and strengthening our social safety nets for all those affected by economic disruption. But we must not undermine what has made us successful by closing ourselves off from the world. China too is continuing to reform its economy. President Xi Jinping spoke about dual circulation for China's new economic model. Domestic circulation or reliance on a domestic market for goods and services would have to play a bigger role in China's growth. But international circulation will not diminish in importance and the two types of circulation must reinforce each other. Southeast Asia will be an increasingly important part of China's international circulation. The 10 Southeast Asian economies have become China's top trading partner for the first time this year. With the restructuring of global supply chains post-COVID-19, Southeast Asia can be an attractive choice for companies considering a China plus one strategy. Besides manufacturing, the digital economy and infrastructure development also offer ample opportunities in Southeast Asia. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the ASEAN-China Free Trade Area. We're also aiming to conclude the RCEP this year. We must continue to signal our commitment to multilateralism and to free and open trade. So to reiterate, my first suggestion is to reform our economies and ensure that globalization works for all. Let me now move to my second suggestion. In the midst of the pandemic, Singapore must strengthen connectivity with the region and the world to facilitate the movement of goods, data and people. On the movement of goods and services on our trade, we must work closely with like-minded partners to keep our trade lines and supply chains open. ASEAN and China are also jointly committed to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on trade and investment. With China, we are pressing ahead with the new International Land-Sea Trade Corridor or the Chongqing Connectivity Initiative. We saw a 20% increase in trade volume in the first half of this year despite COVID-19 through this corridor. On digital connectivity, we launched the ASEAN Smart Cities Network during our chairmanship of ASEAN in 2018. We embarked on a Singapore-China Smart City Initiative in Shenzhen to facilitate digital collaboration between Southeast Asia and the Greater Bay Area in China. We're also entering into digital economy agreements with partner countries. On the movement of people, we are reopening our borders gradually and carefully. Our first fast lane was launched with China in June 2010 for essential business and official travel. We have since agreed on similar arrangements with Malaysia, Brunei, South Korea and Japan. We relaxed border controls for visitors from Brunei and New Zealand to allow the resumption of general travel. We are also in discussion with other parties to expand travel arrangements. Singapore will also continue to promote regional cooperation and deepen our bilateral relationships. I've been in touch with counterparts through video conference and telephone calls. I was happy to receive Chinese Politburo member Yang Tiechi 
when he visited Singapore a few weeks ago. He's my first foreign visitor since the COVID-19 outbreak. And I look forward to hosting Chinese Vice Premier Han Chen in Singapore later this year to co-chair the 16th Joint Council for Bilateral Cooperation. By strengthening cooperation with countries in the region and the world, we'll be in a better position to emerge stronger from COVID-19. Besides making globalization work for all and strengthening connectivity, my third suggestion is to build partnerships among businesses. Adapting to COVID-19 has not been easy for our businesses. In a time of rapid change, it is hard for any company to deal with it alone. We need to build partnerships to deal with the turbulence ahead and seize new opportunities. In Singapore, we're pressing ahead with economic transformation as part of our tripartite partnership between government, the unions and businesses. We set up the Emerging Stronger Task Force to find new bright spots in Singapore and the region. We established industry-led alliances for action as a new form of partnership to prototype new solutions quickly in areas such as smart commerce and sustainability. We are stepping up sector transformation through our industry transformation maps. Our trade associations and chambers have an important role to play. Business China is one good example. Business China develops our business leaders through efforts like the Advanced Leaders Programme and builds bridges with other partners like the MOU with Yapuli China Entrepreneurs Forum that will be signed later. Cross-border collaborations can also help our business grow. One example is the ASEAN Online Sales Day launched in August. This was Southeast Asia's first online shopping event on a region-wide scale. Another example is the China-Singapore Infrastructure Co-Investment Platform by Sabana Jurong and China's Silk Road Fund, which brings together networks and capabilities for infrastructure projects in Southeast Asia. Our businesses should continue working with a wide range of stakeholders, with workers to create better jobs and opportunities for upskilling so that both businesses and employees benefit together, and with local communities to ensure that their business activities benefit the wider society. In this way, we make economic growth inclusive and sustainable. Allow me to now say a few words in Mandarin. 刚才我提到了,由于关闭疫情的影响,全球经济正经历这个世纪以来最严重的衰退。对许多企业和员工来说,这是一个非常艰难的时期。以确保他们能够继续从全球化中受益。这样一来，各国才能取得发展和繁荣。疫情当前，新加坡正在努力跟区域、国家和世界各国在贸易、数码、互联互通以及人员流动方面加强合作，为亚洲的经济增长。做出贡献。此外, 
，企业必须加强合作，共同应对未来的挑战，同时把握新机遇。我们的商团商会在这方面将扮演更重要的角色。通商中国就是一个很好的平台，促进联系与合作。在此，我要感谢通商中国举办今年的论坛，把它搬到线上。尽管关闭对国际活动带来的严峻的挑战，却没有阻挡大家继续交流、互相切磋。祝愿本届论坛圆满成功，大家收获满满。COVID-19 has stressed, has added to the stresses and anxieties of globalization. But Singapore must remain open and connected to Asia and the world, and believe in our ability to adapt, evolve our approaches, and forge new partnerships with one another. Only then can we contribute to and benefit from Asia's growth. This year marks. 30 years of Singapore-China diplomatic relations. Next year, we will commemorate three decades of ASEAN-China dialogue. But our ties go way back. More than a thousand years ago, there was already a vibrant trading network between China and Southeast Asia and between our region and the world, as shown by the discovery of a 9th century shipwreck in the Java Sea containing Tang Dynasty ceramics bound for Middle East. This trading network and the bonds of our people have been resilient, ebbing and flowing over the last 10 centuries. With such strong foundations, even as we battle COVID-19, I'm optimistic that we can emerge from this pandemic to a brighter and more resilient future for our peoples and for the world. Thank you very much.